Well, joining us from Colorado, one of my favorite states, Colorado, Wyoming, I love that area, via Skype is writer and director of Trials of St. Patrick, Paul uh, McCusker. Paul, how are you? Hey, Paul. Good morning. How are you both? Doing great. Thanks for being with us today. I love, love Colorado, by the way. Me too. Well, it's it's beautiful, though we had a snowstorm this past weekend, so just just as we thought we were having spring, a snowstorm came in, and now we're back to spring. So, well, I have to tell uh, you, it's, it's unpredictable, if nothing else. I don't like Colorado quite as much now. <laughs> you can have snowstorms. <laughs> yeah, but it, mel it melts quickly. Yeah, it melts. It does. It goes uh, very quickly. Well, before we get into the trials of St. Patrick, tell us about the concept of Gustin Institute Radio Theater, because that sounds very interesting. Well, um, it's it's a follow-on. The Augustine Institute uh, started as graduate school, and over the last few years, they've been doing a lot of, uh, well, a lot of video, uh, sacramental preparation, uh, about marriage, a lot of different things. And uh, uh, story has been a very big part of, uh, of how they approach what they do, beauty, truth, story. And so I came on board to begin to work on storytelling ideas. And one of those things from my background, my experience professionally, has been doing audio dramas. And so uh, I guess it was a given that we would start to move into that. Using uh, the best actors we record in London, uh, it's a high level of sound design, music, custom music, sound effects, all of that. It is sort of not classic golden age of radio. It's something even beyond that, really, in terms of the fullness of sound. You know, while St. Patrick's story uh, is centuries old, obviously, the issues of uh, slavery and, and abduction, these remain with us today as, you know, uh, very, very critical issues. Is that why the story remains so timeless? Well, I think it's several things. One, one, one thing that I think we respond to is, is not only the fact that slavery itself, the tragedy of slavery, and that St. Patrick was taken as a slave from what was then Roman Britain and taken over to this pagan island of uh, Hibernia, which was Ireland as we know it. But the fact that God called him to go back, uh, I, I think what we have is, is a great hero in Patrick. So he was up against slavery. He was up against this level of uh, human sacrifice, the, kind of this druidic pagan reality. He escaped from it. And then he actually went back in order to take the gospel to them. Uh, so I think the story of Patrick is heroic on so many different levels in, in ways that appeal to us and should appeal to us now in, in a lot of what we're up against in our culture. Mm -hmm. Why do you think he resonates so much with people? Because it seems like everybody, there's, there's a lot of saints, but everybody knows St. Patrick. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it, it's interesting because he's one of the saints that I think we think we know. Uh, until you get into his story, and then you realize, as I did, that I didn't know him very well at all. Uh, and uh, I think we resonate with him uh, because of, as I said, the heroic nature of what he does, but but the sacrificial uh, things that he did that sort of defy a lot of our, our reasoning. I mean, how many of us, having escaped from a particular kind of bondage, would then go back to it uh, to follow a calling from God at great risk and at great personal risk? Uh, and he was also up against people who didn't believe he should do it. Uh, I think many of the church leadership at the time were not thrilled with him going back to this country that was sort of even beyond the pale of what was then the Roman Empire. And it seemed a bit insane. But I, I think we respond to that because he put everything on the line for uh, what he believed God wanted him to do. Hmm. You know, Paul, uh, I got to give you a lot of credit as, as a, a, a guy who produces and uh, records actually a, a radio program every week. You know, I know what it takes in these days of high definition videos and visuals. Uh, what has to be considered to keep the listener engaged? Because you've, you've obviously taken on a great challenge in an audio drama. Well, it, it's interesting. I, I think story wins out all the time. I mean, you can have great technology, you can have CGI, you can do a lot of different things technically. But if the story itself is not compelling, then the audience isn't going to stay with it. It's more like an amusement park ride than it is uh, really a storytelling experience. And I think with sound, we've seen a, 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 a sort of renaissance of sound uh, thanks to all the different devices that we have. I mean, we all have the devices and you can listen now to high quality music, high quality drama and uh, books uh, a lot anywhere. And I, I think that's 
uh, if we can make it interesting with a good story, then people are with us. Mm -hmm. Well, Paul, where can people listen to the trials online or order their own copies, find out more about you? Well, you can, um, airtheater.org, A-I-R theater.org is a good place to start. It's our website. It talks about the productions we're doing and what we have uh, done and what's coming down the pike. And then uh, uh, it's available on Audible, uh, Amazon, uh, a lot of the normal places where you can buy these sorts of things. And it's been airing also on EWTN Radio and uh, a lot of the other networks have been airing it as well. Great well, Skype, by the way. Yeah, Fantastic. I was just thinking the same the technology. thing. Yeah. Yeah, you look well, marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. I really had to work with the camera to get me to look good, so that worked out well. <laughs> well, Paul, thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate it, and keep up the great work. Yeah, thank you so much. Bye now.